Manufacturing dashboards offer a real-time snapshot of your production processes. The goal is to provide decision makers with an easy and fast way to access key performance indicators and other metrics that allow them to run the business well. Crucially, this replaces the need to number crunch each time you need to present these figures in a report or to make a decision. Any time we set out to build a dashboard, we need to gather the data from wherever it's stored, format it, and present it in one coherent form. Hi, I'm Kevin from BuddyBase, and today I'd like to show you how BuddyBase helps us to produce professional looking dashboards from existing data quickly and easily. A dashboard is just a reporting user interface that gathers information and presents results. Unlike static reports, it's consistently connected to the background data meaning that when the data changes, so do your charts, unlike a report on a slide or in a PDF. The goal with creating a dashboard is simultaneously to reduce the admin work that's created when we want to create a report and increase the access to this data in a real-time way. In the specific example we're looking at here in manufacturing, we're likely to look at things like breakages and accidents, efficiency and costs. That data is likely to be stored in a whole host of different formats on different databases and different database types. BuddyBase allows us to be able to gather that information centrally and then create charts on one page using that data dynamically. This is what we'll build. It's a single page dashboard that tells us for the current month some key performance indicators. Here we have the pass rate, the breakages and the incidents. We've got a graph showing productivity by machine and productivity by location. We can see breakages by product and instance by machine. Again, as the underlying data changes, this chart updates. Let's dive in and build this together. If you haven't already, you can sign up for a BuddyBase account from our website, buddybase.com. And there's an accompanying blog post that goes along with this video that has any code that I type in so you can copy and paste it rather than having to follow along with me. When you log in to BuddyBase, you'll arrive at this portal, which allows us to be able to manage any applications we already have or to create new ones. I'll create a new one, and I can choose either to start from a template that already exists, to import an application, or to start from scratch. I'm going to start from scratch, and I'll call this my manufacturing dashboard, and click Create App. With BuddyBase, everything starts from the data, so we're going to help you connect to your data wherever it is. You can connect to multiple data sources, be they a collection of REST API endpoints, a relational or non-relational database, or even a spreadsheet product like Airtable or Google Sheets. My data is in a Postgres database. So I'll put in my connection string, my host, database, user, and password, and I'll enable SSL and I'll press connect. Once that's connected, you'll be presented with a list of all the tables that exist on that database. And you can decide which of those you want to fetch from your database to your BuddyBase application. I actually need all of these tables, so I'll just fetch tables and I'll get all of them. On the left hand side, I can see each of the tables. As I click on them, I've got full CRUD functionality into this database via a spreadsheet like interface. So I can create, read, update, and delete records, and that will be represented in the database straight away. So as a quick overview, breakages are telling us what's been broken and what production it broke on. Production is the product that we create with, with unique ID and product and date. And they also link to the machine and the turnaround time. The machines then have got an ID, a location and the machine name. QA is linking to the production and tells us pass or fail. And the incidents links to the machine and gives us the details about the incident. We are going to write several custom queries that are going to aggregate and select data from these tables and then present them in a meaningful way to our users. The benefit of doing that now is that once we've done it, that work doesn't have to be recalculated, just the answers get to be reaccessed as the underlying data changes. So let's look at our UI. I'll click on design and blank screen. And I'll just give it a forward slash as the root URL and press continue. The next thing I'll be presented with is the RBAC, the role-based access control for this screen. By default, this is basic, which means we'll need people to log in. 
public means people can see this without being logged in, and power and admin are both elevated roles that allow us to segment our application so that different users can see different screens. I'll use basic and click done. I'm going to add a headline component to this, and the headline's going to have the current month. So I'll say this month, and I can use a built-in helper using double curly braces and date now. And what date now allows me to do is to pass a formatting string that will take the current date and format however I like. So mm for two months and four y's for the year. I'm now able to see this month, 11, 2023. Beneath this, we'll add a container. We'll set it to horizontal because we want our cards stacked one beside each other. And we'll add a single card block for now. A card block takes as its input a particular data source, either a table or a custom query, which is what we're going to use. And then it iterates over every row. So in the breakages, we can see it's iterated and it's created a card. Um, it's just calling a title, subtitle, description, hard-coded. We'll make that more dynamic in a little bit. It's maxing out at eight, and it's not paginating at the moment. We could increase this limit and introduce pagination if we wanted. What we'll do instead is create a custom query that we'll be able to access in this data option. So I'll go back to data. I'll go to Postgres, query, create new query. And I'll call this QA pass rate by month. So let's see how we'll do that. We'll select and we'll extract the year from p.date. p is going to be our production table. And we'll cast that as an integer. And we'll call it year. As I, as I said already, all of these queries will be available in the accompanying blog post. So you don't have to type them in. You can just go find the blog post, which will be linked in the description, and copy it if you'd like. So that's the month. And then we want to get the pass percentage. So I'll count up QAID, but I want to filter that where QA.pass fail equals pass, and then times that by 100. I'll then divide that by the count of QA.ID, which I'll cast as a float, which will allow me to get a decimal result. And I'll call this pass percentage. The order might seem a bit strange there because I'm timesing by 100 before I've divided, but it keeps it all together. I'm going to get this from our production table, which we'll call P. And we also need the QA table. And remember that the QA table has a production ID. So that's what we're going to use to join them together. So we'll left join our QA on p.id to QA.productionID. And because we want it by year and month, we'll group them by year and month. And we will order by year and month as well. When we run that, we can see the first month percentage is 90, which is a great pass percentage. The schema shows us that those three values are numbers. And the preview shows us all of the results that we have. So now I can save that query and I can go back to the front end. I'll change the data source to be our QA pass rate by month. And there are three cards because we have data on three months. For its title, we will get the pass percentage. But because of those large decimals, we'll round that. We'll put the percentage sign at the end. Okay. We'll maybe give it a descriptive subtitle. So QA pass percentage. And we'll remove the description. Now these cards are for the three months we have data for. And we actually just want this for one month. So I'll go to no filter set and add a filter. I'll say the year should equal the binding of our double curly braces date now year, 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 year. So it's using our date string again. And month should equal a binding, so not a fixed value, a binding of date now, month, month. And we'll save. And we should now only have one card because only one card should meet those criteria. Brilliant. So this month, our pass percentage has been 75%. Maybe not brilliant. So we're going to use the same filters on the next two cards. So rather than having to do them again, I'll just duplicate the cards but we're going to have different queries. So let's make another custom query. So queries, create new query. This time we'll call it breakages by month. And our query is a bit simpler. 
all we're going to do is we'll select the year. So this bit will stay the same, the year and the month. And then we'll count how many rows there are as an integer, um, as breakages count. Where do you want to get that from? Our breakages table. Could we use the count function as an aggregate function, which means you have to group in some way. So we're going to group by year and month. I'm also order by year and month so that we can read them more easily. And we'll run that query. We can see on month nine, 2023, there are five breakages. We can see the schemas, so they're all numbers, and we can get the other data. So if we save this, go back to our front end, look at our second card block, change the data to be our breakages by month, and change our title to be our breakages count, and then change our subtitle to say breakages. So last but not least, we'll do incidents by month. So again, we'll create a new query, incidents by month. The query is gonna look very similar. We're gonna to go to our incidents table, we'll group by year and month, and we'll count them up. We'll run, we get a very similar kind of setup. We'll save our query, go back to our design tab, the third cards block, we'll change it to be incidents, we'll change our title to be incidents, and our subtitle as well. So there we go. When we get to next month, this will say 000 as the month changes. But more importantly, as things happen in our factory, each time we look at this dashboard, it will be live and up to date. The next thing we'll look at is our productivity breakdowns. So we'll add another container, and this time we'll give it a, pa a margin at the top of 16 pixels, just to give it some space. By the time we finish, we'll have two bar charts, which show a number of products broken down by machine and by location. So let's add a chart block. This is a pre-configured set of components that are used to get some data, be able to draw a chart, and be able to render it in different ways. We want to create a new query to feed this. So let's get our Postgres query query. And this is going to be our production count by machine and by month. So we're going to need a link between the machine and the production. So I'll paste in the query. So we're going to get the machine name from the machine table. We get the year and month from the production table. And we'll count how many there are on the production count. It doesn't really matter what field we count here. We could just put a star in here if we wanted. But effectively, we're counting how many things were created. I'm going to look up from the machines table. And then I'm joining to the machines table the production table. The machines table has an ID. And that matches the production, which has a column called machine ID. I'll then group it by machine, year and month. And we can see, right, for machine number one, 2023, month nine, I made seven thingies. Machine name is text, the other fields are number, and then we preview, we're seeing all the data, grouped by machine, then by year, then by month. Let's save that and go back to our front end. For our chart block, we'll say, hey, the data we want you to use is our production count by month and by machine by month. We'll say this is going to be a bar chart. We'll set the label column to be machine name and the data column to be production count. Amazing. So you can see here, brilliant. We've got three results from machine one, three results from machine two, three and four. And that's because we've got data for three months. So we'll need to do our filtering. So I'll filter, I'll say year should equal a binding of date, now, year, 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 year. And month should equal the binding of date now, month, month, and we'll save. So now we should just have one column for each of the machines. Amazing. Now I want another bar chart to fit in here. So I'm going to give this one a width of 50% and save that. And the last thing I'll do is just give it a title, which maybe says productivity by machine. So I'll duplicate this chart, which will save me having to set those filters. And I'll set the container to be horizontal. But I want this to have different data. It's going to be a similar query, but it's going to be doing the productivity by location rather than by machine. So we'll call this production count by location by month. Having really well named queries means you can use them in other places, being really clear on what they're doing. So I'll paste in the query, 
like so. So again, we're getting the location, the date, and we're joining them together. Brill. We're getting the location from the machines because the machines know where they are. I'll save this query, go back to design, and on the second chart, switch over the data to be by location and switch the label column to be location this time. So our title should be productivity by location. We might want to make this horizontal and maybe we could change the color palette so it shows it to be different. Kind of up to you if you prefer it or not. Now the last thing we're gonna do is create a second row of charts that are going to represent our breakages and our incidents. So we'll duplicate our chart container. Again, we're making use of this duplication function so we're not repeating work. And just like before, we'll need to create new queries for these two charts. The first query is going to be breakages by month by product. So we will do our query. We'll call it breakages by month and by product. So we'll select the same information as our breakages by month query before, but this time we're also getting the product information, which we didn't get before. So I'll run this. Brilliant. I can see product ground screw, one breakage in that month. You can see great group by year month, and it's grouped by product this time. Okay, so year month and then product. Awesome. Let's save that. And then we'll go back to our design tab. For our third table, we'll change this to a pie chart. And we'll change the data to be our breakages by month by product. And we will change the label column to be our product. And our data column to be our count. So one of each of those has been broken. Our last query will be incidents by machine. So we'll create a query. Create new query, we'll call it incidents by machine. And this query structure will start to feel very similar now. We have our name, our count, and counting incidents, but we're grouping it this time by machine. This is why we need this different query, because of how we're grouping it differently. So if we run that, we can see machine one, there are 12 incidents on the month of nine. Our schema is text number, 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 and our preview of all our data. We save that, go to our design tab. We'll switch this back from being horizontal to being vertical. Uh, maybe put it back to palette one and change the data to be our incidents by machine, our label to be machine name and our data to be our incidents count. Now we've got our dashboard, we can think about our colors. Maybe we want to change the palettes. We've got full access to that in this colors tab here. We've got 10 preset palettes and then you can create your own custom palette if you'd prefer. Once you're satisfied, we'll be able to publish our application and then be able to share this URL with any of our users who we can invite to be able to use it. If we do want this to be publicly available, of course, we could just share, we could set the R back to public and allow anyone who wants it to be able to see what's going on. I hope you find this helpful. We created a whole series of tutorials to help with manufacturing and logistics. Have a look to see if your use case is covered. And if there's any we're missing, comment below and we'll get on it. Hope you see you around here soon. Thanks. Bye.